I love a big bowl of hypocrisy. You know, it's what I have for breakfast first thing in the morning. A big bowl of hypocrisy. Forget what like it shredded wheat. Like? Mm. Tastes a lot like um you ever have like the 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 frosted mini wheats? Mm-hmm. It's delicious. It's delicious, you know? Mm. Or it's just like sugar coated bread pieces. I thought I, hypocrisy would be a bit bitter, but maybe Well, I love it because I, you know, to me I f- I thrive off of hip I thrive off of hypocrisy. I love it. It's like um, you know, it, it's it's like put it's like a vitamin for me. I love it. <laughs> and this one today is provided to us by Republican Senator Rick Scott of Florida. He's the only senator by the way that looks like Fire Marshal Bill. You remember him? Mhm. <laughs> Jim, Jim Carrey's Fire, Fire Marshal Bill. Bill. <laughs> yeah, sure. What does he how did he do it? He was like ah. He like dries the top of his mouth, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey. <laughs> He's among a few Republican holdouts right now on raising the debt ceiling. This is something that every administration, whether Democrat or Republican, has to do. And you can get all sanctimonious about it, right? Yes, we absolutely should have, we shouldn't have to raise the debt ceiling. I mean, heck, the last president to have a balanced budget was President Clinton with a Republican Congress. They got it done, right? We had a surplus thanks to a balanced budget. But every president has to deal with this. And a number of holdouts like Rick Scott right now are carping about raising the deficit. And Republican leadership is once again playing a game of chicken with raising the debt ceiling, demanding cuts to Social Security and Medicare, by the way. So here's how we'll pay for it. Yeah, we'll raise the debt ceiling. You know what we're going to do? We're going to cut Social Security and Medicare as their ransom right now. That's what they want to do in exchange for their vote. Never mind the fact that you're spending, you're, you're so quick to just sign off on spending $750 billion on a defense budget that bombs other countries. I do that for the troops. No, you don't. You don't do that for the troops. You do that for your defense contractor buddies who make billions of dollars off of it. That's what you do and it they for. Sure don't wait, and they sure don't wait months to do that. There's no discussion there's no public people standing up in congress saying we can't pass this bill because you know who's gonna pay for it Mm -hmm. no there's no debate about it but scott rick scott has amnesia because back when trump was president he had he had no problem supporting the raising of the debt ceiling under turtle boy mitch mcconnell at the time trump is president mitch mcconnell is majority leader and rick scott was fine with it so watch now as uh as as uh as Fox News host Brett Baer calls him out on his blatant hypocrisy. Watch this. This is golden. Senator, you're talking a lot about the deficit and debt. A number of Republicans are. But it wasn't that way under the Trump administration. In fact, if you look at the numbers, the debt went up at the end of fiscal 2020, $26.9 trillion. The Trump administration and Republicans added $6.7 trillion to the debt. That was since President Obama's last budget. 33% increase. Understanding COVID had a big role in that. Uh, but there's not a great track record for Republicans recently to tout themselves as deficit debt hawks and now to be doing it here. Oh, I did. I paid off. A th- I walked in as governor of Florida in 2011 with a $4 billion budget deficit, a state that had increased its debt every year by over a billion dollars. And I, in eight years, working with the legislature, growing our economy, we paid off a third of state debt. Since I've been up here, I've been talking about the debt, how debt, excessive debt, excessive spending causes your family and the poorest families the most money. It's causing inflation. It's causing ridiculous well, inflation you're kind of right a now. you a voice, aren't you? Or one of them. Oh, no. Uh, we had a caucus meeting where we said we're not going to raise the debt ceiling without stru- all Republican senators said we will not raise the debt ceiling without structural change. But my point That's is, what is we that all you agreed did to do under the Trump administration with no <clears throat> strings attached. I've been up here two years, Brett. I am working my tail off. I'm fed up with a government that can't live within their means. So to, to be clear, like you supported this before. Uh, but now because of a different president, now Democrats in charge. But I've been working my butt off. You know, so yes, I, I I won't admit to it, but yes, that's exactly what I did. You know, if you smashed his nose in a bit, you got Voldemort. I, I was going to say Voldemort, I, and I was like, no, maybe that's a little too extreme. Uh, so Fire Marshal Bill, like, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me, all righty then, let me tell you something. <laughs> you're, you're mixing Ace Ventura and Fire yeah. Marshal Ted. Harry Potter. Yeah. You will die, Harry. <laughs> 
let me tell you something, Brett. Every family in this country has got to figure out how to live within their means. I, I grew up in a very poor family. My mom had to figure out how to put food on the table without borrowing money. There was nobody that's just going to go throw money at her. So we all have, we all have to do it on personal lives. We have to do it as government. You can do it. Watch how you spend the money. Like on this bill, do it responsibly. Do roads, bridges, airports, and seaports. Don't borrow money. It's it's so funny to watch like when you, you can see when they're getting a question that they're not prepared prepared for in their head you they're thinking how can I spin this? How can I spin this? How can yeah. I spin this? <laughs> oh crap. Oh crap. Here I am on Fox News. This is supposed to be this is supposed to be a favorable show. Brett, where's the softballs you promised me? Let me tell you something, Brett. So he did get a softball because Brett didn't push him further on that. What Brett failed to note, of course, was that Scott did what he did with the money from those tax cuts as governor. And the fact that the Trump tax break that was meant to go to the poor in his state ended up getting funneled to a rich GOP donor super yacht marina instead. Orlando Weekly covered this story after uh, ProPublica did a great write-up on this, but uh, Orlando Weekly did a great uh, summation of it. Thanks to Rick Scott, Trump's tax break for poor people went to Florida's billionaires instead. Essentially, President Trump's 2017 tax plan was supposed to create jobs by handing over $1 trillion in tax cuts to corporations and our nation's billionaires. But since Trump knew he also had to appeal to the proletariat, a portion of the plan was dedicated to things called opportunity zones. Right, to a billionaire's marina. So rather than Scott asking Scott, what, you know, rather than Fox asking Scott about how he used the revenue for those Trump tax cuts, he just moved on to the next topic instead. Shocking. Nothing to see here. Okay, I, I asked you a hardball question, but no follow-up on that. How would he have answered that question? Let me tell you something. He would have done the same thing. He would have deflected. <laughs> just like, well, I grew up poor. I mean, my mom, my mom couldn't figure, you know, just spend, like they all just, it's all word salad. You know, my mom grew up yeah. poor. I grew up poor. And, the, you know, just balance the budget. Just figure out how to pay for it. Okay. But, but it's like, you know, but not, you don't do that though. You don't do that just to be clear, but you want other people to do that. So no hypocrisy it, here. It, it's funny when you go back and you read a lot of what these people say textually and you're like, what the heck did you just say? Like <laughs> right. what you just said makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, and it, we're equal opportunity here. I mean, read, read what Nancy, Pel like read something Nancy Pelosi has said, right. And read a transcript of it, read a, a transcript of something that, President Biden has said, I mean, you'll, good luck, right? Read a transcript of something President Trump has said. You want comedy there. You know, I mean, read anything these politicians say. Unless it's written by one of their staff members. You know, when they're at publicly speaking, they often re reveal a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of word salad. Um, well, and you know, know why? Because it's worked for them for all these years. They've never been, nobody's ever been like, uh, like when, with Biden in the town hall. They weren't like, uh, sir, what you said just did not make any sense. Could you please like formulate some kind of uh, sentence we can understand? They don't push. No. They, these politicians aren't pushed ever, and that's why they just continue to do it. Yeah, can you imagine during that CNN town hall if Don Lemon had like actually stopped and called him out on it? Uh, like, Mr. President, um, are you okay? Seems like you're having an episode here. You literally for one minute said absolutely nothing, and you mumbled and made up a lot of words. Like, you... Was that a quite, was that an answer? Like, cause I, you know, I, you're president of the United States. Are you okay? Uh, that would have been an opportunity. I mean, Hey, people would have vilified him for it. How dare you ask him if he's cognitively okay, but that's an opportunity. Mr. President, I, you know, I noticed for the last minute, you literally just made up a whole lot of words and stumbled and didn't say anything. Um, you know, some, some Republicans at home right now might say that you're in cognitive decline. What do you say to those people? Is that off limits? Are we not allowed to ask that question? No, you're not. We, we were able think to ask I, think all Donald the ad dollars they'd have lost. <laughs> I can't believe Don Lemon would ask the president if he's got dementia. You know why they don't? Because they know that's going to pull Hillary out of the shadows. <laughs> I can't believe Don Lemon would do that to the president of the United States. Fire him. You know, he'd have all these woke woke liberals calling for Don Lemon to be Don Lemon to be fired. Sure, but you can ask Donald Trump if he's cognitively okay, right? That's that's on CNN did whole segments on Donald Trump's cognitive decline. Can't touch it. Can't touch it. You got TV, camera. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when they just pushed yeah. him on that? 
TV, camera. You said that. Remember, you were going back and forth, Mr. Trump. TV, camera, TV. Are you okay mentally? And then for one minute on a CNN live town hall with Don Lemon, we've got like a, uh, we don't know what happened. And you can't ask him about that? <laughs> hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Good. good lot of, got to love that mainstream media. Got to love that mainstream media. Come on, man. Sorry, Joe. It's the truth. We got to ask these questions, man. Got to ask these questions. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.